everybody, welcome back. This is Inside Fitness Radio Presents Total Fitness Podcast. My name is Matthew. I'm Walter. I apologize if I sound nasally today. I have a cold. Not COVID, but a cold. But anyways, what we're talking about today. Uh, so recently, a big figure in bodybuilding, and that's not a pun. He was actually quite a big character, um, had quite a few followers, uh, very much did impact the sport. His name was Cedric McMillan, and unfortunately, he passed away. I believe it was a week and a half ago. Um, mm. And there's all these debates coming out. You see all these YouTubers coming out and saying, oh, it was this. Oh, it was that. Oh, it was this. Um, and it always trickles down to, again, bodybuilding. You have the PD use. It's widespread. It's known. It's just what happens in the sport. What we want to talk about, though, is something that people aren't necessarily realizing or want to acknowledge which is the extremes of everything else, not just the PDs. We don't want to talk about the PDs today. Obviously, that that is an issue. Uh, That's its own thing. We talked about that before. What we're going to talk about today is a little bit more of why is nobody talking about the other extremes? You know, the the food, the lack of sleep, the the dehydration, all that sort of stuff. So, um, Walter, why don't you take the stance... uh, in terms of the negative effects that food in general can have on your body when it comes to eating a buttload of it to gain muscle. <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, well, I, I mean, honestly, just as that, or are we going to do this as a, as a, a back and forth kind of thing? Or do you want me we'll to just do, talk? Uh, I think I can certainly do. just talk. No, we'll do a back and forth, I guess. Okay, okay. I mean, basically, yeah, food's bad, okay. Um, it, uh, <laughs> All of it. Stop eating. Well, I mean, if you look at other sports, and I mean, I, I don't want to say that other sports are perfect either, but, you know, the ups and downs of, of bodybuilding seem to be a lot stronger than that. I don't know of any other sport where the diet, is, where force feeding, is mm-hmm. quite so bad as it is. I mean, okay, yeah, if you're, you're feeding to play football, you're not necessarily trying to get that kind of calorie rate and that kind of weight gain all the time. And we, you know, as soon as we come off the diets, we go back onto force feeding ourselves and trying to get more weight on and trying to push that way. And I think that that's one of the issues. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the image that comes to mind for me is uh, when you're making foie gras, and you just keep stuffing the food down the goose's gullet. You actually have a ring around the neck so it can't throw it back up. There's just a thing, and it's just getting it down there. And what you create is this amazing fat liver that people like to eat for some reason. Um, and uh, how healthy is that? I mean, yeah. it basically explodes, right? Yeah, exactly. So that, I mean, that's where I'm coming from. We, we have both sat in that position of, okay, it's 30 minutes until my next client, I have 30 minutes to eat this nine ounces of rice, eight ounces of chicken or whatever it was in front of us after a workout. We're already four meals down. It's already one, it's only 1 p.m. in the afternoon or 2 p.m. in the afternoon. And I have to eat my fourth meal of the day, forcing it down, taking so much time because you just don't want to eat. And that's like, people are like, oh, it's a part of bodybuilding. And I get that it kind of is. But, and yeah, like other sports, as you said, they're, they're not perfect, but I don't think, again, there's no degree of extreme in football or boxing. Like if it is, it's, they're an outlier. Like I'm, I'm a boxer now and it's like, you know, sure. Maybe before a, sh- uh, a competition or a match, you know, people will have to cut down five, 10 pounds of water weight or, you know, a little bit of body fat, but for the most part, you're pretty consistent throughout the year you're eating pretty healthily throughout the year. You're training the exact same throughout the year, like all that sort of stuff. You're not adding in these extreme variables in the same sense of like, okay, you're, you're bulking for three months and now you're going to start your cut for six or for three months. And then you go back into a maintenance phase for four weeks. And then you're going to force feed again. And then you're going to do a mini cut here. And then you're going to do a big bulk here. Like it's insane. Like how much up and down that is normalized. I wouldn't say not everybody does it, but in the sport, like it is normalized. And, and the people that are coming across and are saying like maintaining, main gaining, I should say, like Greg said and those type of guys, they're getting so much hate because it's like, no, you have to eat tons of uh, food to gain weight. You have to cut down to lose all that body fat. And you just go through these cycles. And it's like, those cycles aren't healthy. 
you know, you can, you can do it another way. It's just like, how much time are you willing to put in? And again, it's unfortunate. These guys are dying at like 40 years old. But if you also looked at them when they were like 25, 26, they were jacked. They were huge. They didn't want to wait until they were 40 to get to their prime, which nonetheless, that's typically what they're doing anyways. But you can look at a guy and I hate to call people out, but you look at a guy like Nick Walker, who's in his late twenties or maybe early thirties. I'm not sure who he's like 300 pounds of just pure muscle. And if you saw his transformation, it was just like year after year, he's packing on, packing on, packing on calories after calories after calories, and then extreme diet after extreme diet after extreme diet, and then calories, calories, calories. Like there's no real break almost. No. And I, I mean, the human body is meant to say, take certain loads on it. Yeah. Um, how much does it take your heart to get the blood pumped through that kind of body mass? Mm -hmm. And yet, what is the one muscle that doesn't get the same amount of exercise as everything else? Especially it's the heart and body, right? Running especially, yeah. Yeah, we're not doing cardio. We're not going to do cardio, <coughs> especially during a ball, right? Yeah. So you end up with a weaker heart that's having to pump more blood or the same amount of blood through a much larger frame. Mm hmm that you have to carry around. If you were not a bodybuilder weighing 350 pounds, what kind of uh, impediment is that to your life? Yeah, yeah. And that's the, the funny thing is like, people will always criticize obese, overweight people for like the heart disease risk they're at. And it's like, it doesn't matter. Like if you're huge, like if you have that much body mass i don't care if it's fat or muscle it's still not necessarily yeah sure muscle is probably a bit healthier for you than fat but it's still nonetheless that is insane amounts of body weight that for a five foot like eight five foot nine five foot ten person is not supposed to be a thing right mm -hmm. <clears throat> like it's um it's insane that the lengths that people will go to just to prove that, you know, they can be the biggest, they can be the best and all that sort of stuff. And that, unfortunately, the sport has pushed us to doing that. Like it was about, you have to do the most, you have to eat the most because, you know, that extra 100 calories that you don't want to eat, the next guy's doing it. And the judging criteria is all about mass. The biggest points you can win are on mass. How much mass do you have? The mass monster. That started in the 90s, and it's a very true thing in the amateur mm -hmm. level. Absolutely. The amateurs, even like that's the biggest problem. It's like if you're a pro, like you you realize when you get to a certain point, like this is your life. Like, yeah, I understand the PDs, the food, you know, it's just like the lifestyle, you've accepted that. But I don't think people truly understand what it means to say, I am willing to die an early death until somebody they know dies at 40, and they're like, oh shit. It's like, oh, that won't happen to me. But then it's like 15 or 16 guys end up. Exactly. And, and the trend is having, and it's increasing in speed as we, as we sit here. Yeah. Right? More and more guys are dying. But it's funny, you know, And when, when I was young, young, of course, that, you know, die young, stay pretty, rock and roll. Yeah. Person, rock and roll, blah, 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 right? Now, those of us who have been around for a while are looking back and going, yeah, you know, if you end live that way. What did we lose when Kurt Cobain died? What did we lose, you know? because of that lifestyle and this is no different no i mean it's a sport we are pushing ourselves expecting that it doesn't matter if we die early until you start to reach a certain age where it's like i don't want to die yet i mean these guys also are walking around with really bad mobility some most most, well, most. i mean with the exception of one person i well two including you but one other person uh byron who really oh, yeah. focused on his mobility. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that many guys who are like, yeah, I'm going to push that much to make sure my mobility is equal to the amount of mass that I'm, I'm gaining to the amount of everything else. Yeah, yeah. So um, there again, there are those markers mm -hmm. for longevity that are being taken away because you're not doing this, you're not doing this, you're not doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? You're just... <clears throat> yeah, exactly. And I mean, that's the other extreme. It's like, when you're going into competition, especially with competition, it's like the sleep just ends up becoming non-existent. 
whether you're natural or PED uh, enhanced, but it's like people just kind of go with it. They're like, all right, I'm going to take two scoops of pre-workout today instead of one. And that's another thing is the extremes of like, I'm not saying pre-workout is bad. I'm not saying caffeine coffee is bad. I'm saying the extreme use of it is bad. And when you're, when you're taking for the past, like eight months, nonstop caffeine after caffeine pill, or like pre-workout scoop after pre-workout scoop with a coffee, with an ice cap, like whatever it is. Like I know just, just a little bit more, just a little bit more strength. So make it more. It's like, what can I improve here? Well, I don't want to improve my sleep or it's like, it's that vicious cycle of like, I can't sleep because I'm already so hyped up on caffeine. So I'll just go to sleep and only get like three, four hours of sleep and then just take pre-workout and then a coffee midway through the day. And then another pre-workout or something like that. Like, and you have kids that are like 20 years old developing heart issues. What? It sounds like me in the eighties, except it was cocaine. (laughs) (laughs) I I mean, sure. I mean, we can use that as an example. But uh, it's that different. It's not, yeah. I mean, your base it caffeine's a drug. I mean, it is a drug. If you want to look at it that way, it's uh you're still dealing with the outcome of you're doing a disservice to your body. There's like 20-year-old kids who are literally like having heart problems because they're like, oh, what can I'll dry scoop? My friend dry scooped one scoop on TikTok. I'm gonna do three. And then somebody else is like, I'm gonna do eight, and they end up in the hospital because you know their heart can't take it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that these are the extremes that people aren't necessarily talking about. It's the extended use. And yeah, I mean, you can get blood work. You can always check and make sure. But at the end of the day, it's like, you know, if you're not sleeping well, if you're eating way too much or way too little, if your body isn't recovering from the workouts, it's all stress. It's all inflammation. And it's going to, it's going to affect you in one way or another, especially going into a show. I mean, if you're going into a show, there's, there's the stress of everything involved of that show. Plus there's the stress of everything outside of that. You still have a job. You might still have kids in a relationship. You might still have to, you know, do something, a project at work that's stressing you. So you're literally like putting your body, unless you are like in Zen mode, unless you're like able to kind of have that lifestyle, like you're going to be stressed to the limit and your body is going to, it's going to fight back. I mean, I don't know many people that can do shows back to back, like multiple shows back to back because they end up, you know, it's too exhausting. It's too much on the body. And the people that can do that, you know, they tend to have, a better understanding of their body or they're just like they're willing to push it past the limit of what because they're like well i already feel like crap may as well just keep doing this and you know do a show in two weeks then another two weeks and then just complete my season but i mean in, in a lot of cases too i mean there are people who are not necessarily having that outside job do i say again they are not necessarily having an outside job to go to or anything like that yeah those yeah. who can isolate themselves because they have sponsorship and that sort of thing certainly can do better in terms of not worrying about the those extra stressors yeah exactly but i mean, they still have a lot of stress going show to show to show the body yeah. does yeah well i mean my last show i was mainly doing i was doing in-person training but i had more online and it was mm-hmm. like you know i would do like three four hours in the morning which was still a huge stress to my body but then the, mo- the rest of it i could just sit sit lie down on my computer or my laptop and you know, message my clients how it's, but, but nonetheless, I mean, I'm not demonizing it because we did it and we loved it and we grew from it. It gave us like so many opportunities and I'm not saying that it's bad to do. I'm just saying like the extremes need to be looked at more. The rush to get to first place, the rush to get to be the biggest, the rush to be the leanest, these are the things that are going to really cause the body issue. And I mean, you look at these guys who, you know, I've, I've had clients that were like 35, they were like maybe working out, you know, three, four times a week. They never really tracked their diet. They were in good shape though. They had that muscle maturity. And then, you know, they're like, they come to me and they're like, in a year, I want to compete in a physique or a bodybuilding show. And I'm like, sweet, let's do it. And they, they have no problem doing it really. Like, yeah, there's still a little bit of hardship, but they're not trying to be the biggest they're not trying to be the leanest. I mean, they do end up becoming pretty lean because of the muscle maturity and just thinner skin at that age. But 
um, you know, they, their bodies can handle it a little bit better because they're not trying to push as much as like, I've had 19 year olds come to me and say, what drugs do I take? And how much, how many calories should I be eating? You know, my, my TDE says I only need 2,500. So I'm going to eat 4,500, but I think I should probably maybe eat like 5,000 because, you know, like Chris Bumstead eats like 5,000. Look at Chris Bumstead. But this is it. I mean, who actually does when you are trying to be the best, you know, you're going to do what the best does. doesn't matter what it does to your body. Yeah. It doesn't matter how long they've been doing it and how much experience they have um, and, and how they've trained their body to deal with those stresses. And the genetics and, yeah. you know. Well, you, you saw it the last time we competed together. Yeah. Some of the uh, the younger competitors who were around us mm-hmm. who, who talked about, about how, how desperate they were and how bummed out they were because they hadn't even stepped on stage yet. Yeah. But they'd already lost in their minds because they were looking at everybody else and oh i don't know why i'm here well, and i mean the experience of doing it is what makes you better at doing it yeah yeah you know yeah, but, I always but they're young that. and they want to be a champion immediately yeah i always showed up to a show being like if this is this is the best i can be i know because i didn't cheat on my diet i trained as hard as i could like everything was you know yeah. these guys just have maybe more time on me or maybe they have better genetic or like whatever it was that was always my mindset with bodybuilding but yeah, you're absolutely right. There was always these guys yeah. that were like, they were like backstage. They're like, I'm just going to eat my post-show treats right now because I, I'm not going to win. I'm not even going to, there was, a, I did a show, the second show we did actually, the Toronto Pro. There mm-hmm. was a guy backstage um, who uh, was competing. I think who was like the middleweight or like the 175 and under who, um, who just didn't, step on stage for the finals because he's like i'm not gonna win why am i gonna waste my time i'm like that's completely the wrong mindset but that all oh, the joy is gone. yeah and it all circles back to this issue of extreme be the best what do i have to do to be the best do what the best does but i don't want to do just what the best does i'm going to take it the next step further if he's doing this this and this if he's eating five thousand calories and you know he's not sleeping a lot or like whatever it is i'm going to do it better than him even though there's no way possible that I can do that or I can manage that instead of taking my time. Yeah. He's, he's 15 years older with 15 years worth of experience under his belt. And I'm going to just jump in now. Yes. Yeah. I can. On the other hand, I mean, there's something, how am I going to put this? I'm going to put this as bluntly as I can. And now I'm speaking to you guys who organize the shows. You need to have, uh, your age categories raised up a little bit because <laughs> it is disheartening to get up on stage as I did last time with people who were 15 years younger than me. Yeah. Generally. Um, it was good as a learning experience and I don't negate that fact, but it was also difficult to look at them and go, well, well, yeah, they why have... is there not a 60 plus category? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the fact that they took it away was kind of annoying, but the one good thing, actually, I will say um, the NPC did, and I think Canada is doing it as well, the CPA, is they've said if you're under 18, you're not allowed to compete anymore. Yeah. Which I agree with 100% because, again, you're, you're leading to 16-year-old kids I've competed against in the team divisions, or I've seen in the team divisions, I should say, um, who are doing gear. You have these kids who are they like, don't have stable hormones as it is. Yeah. Not only that, they're like, you know, I'm I'm talking to these guys. I coach boxing, and like a lot of these kids are getting into weight training. They're like 16, 17, and they're like, they're not doing gear or anything, but they're like, they want to be bigger, they want to have more muscle and all that. And because I used to bodybuild, they always come to me and ask me questions. And they're like, yo, Matt, like how many calories should I be? And like, you know, I tried, I'm trying to do two workouts a day and I'm just so tired. And it's like, dude, you're 17. Just eat a little bit more. Like, just do what your body requires you to do right now. I and this is it's funny because like I was the exact same way, and yeah. I w- and if I was if I was seventeen again, I would take my stupid fucking advice. Excuse my language. I would be doing the exact opposite of what this twenty four year old is saying to him, and it would have been like, no, I'm gonna eat more. I'm gonna work out twice a day, and this and that, because that's what you do at that age. So the fact that like eighteen years old, they're not allowed to. That's a good start, but it's, uh, 
we need bigger figures in the sport to really do come out and say, look, guys, we do have to kind of take it down a little bit. Maybe the bodybuilding criteria needs to shift a little bit. You know, the mass monster, I get it. I, I like looking at them. I enjoy seeing them compete. That's what bodybuilding has turned into. But, you know, classic physique was that division that came out to be like, hey, we're going to bring it back a little bit to the old golden age. It's going to the next level already. Men's physique was the board shorts. If you look at like 2016, 2015 men's physique compared to where it is now, it's like you have bodybuilders in board shorts who are bigger than the freaking bodybuilders on the Mr. O stage almost, or just as big. Like there's something going wrong. Judges are not saying anything about it. And judges should be saying, I mean, why is it not said by a judge? You don't belong in this category. You that's are it. too big. I mean, that's it. I mean, Except even with calves, perhaps. <laughs> Even with your, uh, even with classic physique, I mean, classic physique is a little bit better because you have your height and your weight, yeah. but let's be realistic. I mean, the height division for me, I think I was allowed to be 205 pounds at my cap. I was like 187 and I'm like, yeah, I could have definitely had more muscle, but you know, 205 pounds at 5'11", I like 4% body fat. That's a, it's a big dude. That's pretty massive. I was like 190. And, you know, I didn't think I was then, but I was a big guy. And, uh, and then you, you jump up like to six foot and it's like 215 and then six one is like 230 or I don't know what it is now, but in the pros, you're even bigger. So I don't know, man, it's uh, these extremes of having to win, the extremes of being the biggest, being the leanest, the extremes of the food, the lack of sleep, the lack of mental health maybe well you know it, it's it's funny uh, if you look at other things because when you're talking about the the big big guys i was thinking about percher on horses compared to other horses and stuff like that but i mean we're, we're training this is a dog show bodybuilding is a draw a dog show right it's so really, yeah. if necessary we'll breed our dogs to the point where they may not live long where they may not be able to breathe they can barely walk or they get hip, hip dysplasia at some point early because of whatever but they look good for when we take them on stage exactly maybe that's what we are taking ourselves to where it's not about quality of life it's about do you win the prize or do you not win the prize yeah uh, and the problem now is is do you win the prize in the social media following or do you not yeah and because that uh, matters a lot too i mean i would say it matters more now I'm like, there's guys that are doing this stuff just to have a bigger following, not even to compete. And that's like, that's even worse in my opinion. Like at least if you compete and you understand, you truly understand what's involved in that, that you could die, you could have kidney failure, you could have heart problems, whatever it might be. That's one thing to just do it, to grow your Instagram following. Fuck man, just use a Photoshop filter. We will all do anything to grow our, our, our Instagram following. Anything. Oh man. But Including opening our OnlyFans. Uh, <laughs> account uh, no the bank account no <laughs> that's the grow the bank account <laughs> oh man but that's it I mean it's something that I really we if we talk about it so what the, it, it needs to be the guys at the higher level talking and saying hey you know what the judging might need to change the the way we eat may need to change the way we look at what's involved with bodybuilding prep and that needs to change. You know, my last point will be this. We, we always talk about the, the heart being an issue, which is probably the biggest issue. <clears throat> what's the best way to have a healthy heart Do intensive cardio. Mm -hmm. And what's the one thing that bodybuilders will do cardio wise is low intensity, steady state. You're just walking for 45 minutes. That's yeah. not, it's not going to do anything. It's not you need to be doing your high intensity three to four times a week. And it's only like 15, 20 minutes, but you need to be doing it. And, you know, Seth Perosi actually is a great example of this. You know, he's, he's added that into his routine. He looks, mm. he looks the same. He looks like he's a lot healthier, feels a lot better, all that sort of stuff. But, you know. Well, I, and also just in terms of time, if, if your life only has so many minutes in it, 
do you want to spend it doing slow, steady for an hour or two? Or do you want to do some hit training, get it done, and then have an hour to go and have a nap, yeah. do whatever, you know, get out there. Um, I think that's just a more sensible way of dealing with things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the, the idea with the prep too is like, why are you doing an hour? It's like, well, because I have to, I have a show in 12 weeks. It's like, okay, well, how about you just be a little bit more patient, take a bit more time instead of 12 weeks, maybe you compete in a year, maybe instead of forcing food down to gain weight, just, you can add like one pound of muscle and 10 pounds of fat. You can just slowly add that pound of fat or the, the pound of muscle lean. <laughs> just take that bacon and slap it on your arm. Yeah. And it's like, Again, we're not going to change the minds of no. people who, you know, are in it. And I get that, you know, my mind wouldn't have been changed unless it was something that, you know, drastically did almost kill me and change my life mm -hmm. completely. I would probably be still doing it. But again, this is what is involved with the sport. That all, you know, it's, it's still, it's running. And now every, every week, every second week, you yeah. open up Instagram and you see, rest in peace so and so has died you know and left children or left whatever yeah and and you think well why did that have to happen to them they looked great so we have to examine what those things are and try and not have that happen exactly but there you go guys that's all we have for you today i'm matthew yeah. i'm walter we'll see you next time stay safe stay breezy